Hey everyone, i um, got a new toy to play with today and have a look at. Um, I bought myself a new Geiger counter. Um, my previous one was this um, uh, Mighty Own Geiger counter, um, which is a great little unit. Um, it's pretty sensitive, um, it's easy to make, um, but it doesn't have any display or data logging on it. Now, I, I had planned to um, make my own data logger thing that would plug in um, and provide. Um, really long term uh, logging capabilities um, low power is going to be a little el electronics project of mine but um, I never seem to get these things done I don't have time for them so I've decided to buy myself um, a, a Geiger counter um, have all that built in um, just taking the easy option I'm afraid um, so I bought, um, I bought this which is uh, the GQ made Geiger counter, it's the GMC 300E there's a few different versions of this that they uh, they make, there's the 330E um, and a few uh, a few lesser models as well, they actually do one um, which is basically a, a module uh, which is the electronics that are inside which just allow you to whack in your own tube uh, and make quite a cheap um, Geiger counter um, probably would work out cheaper than the um, the Mighty Ohm counter, but I, I do like this. So uh, let's open this up and uh, see what it's like. Yeah, probably the usual user manuals of PDF and pointless driver software. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Okay, so we got um, we've got a UK plug power adapter. Hmm, <laughs> we've all seen these before, haven't we? I think uh, I, th I think this might get saved and get uh, get taken apart to see um, exactly what's in this. That could be interesting because I don't suppose this is a genuine Apple one. Um, okay, so we've also got car power adapter typical 5 volt thing mini USB lead yeah we've all got plenty of those and a carrying pouch velvety on the outside This is the actual Geiger counter itself. Fairly lightweight. We've got a USB port on the side. Uh, that looks like a, a 3.5mm audio jack. So I've got this turned on now so uh, we can have a quick look at um, the uh, the display and uh, maybe some of the menus as well. I'm not going to do an uh, in-depth review of this. Um, so um, on the uh, screen here, you got um, date along the top there. You can change that easily to time, uh, and you got a few symbols here, sort of mirror the sort of things you'd see on your mobile phone. So you got a battery, uh, battery gauge. You got a little speaker, which means the clicker is on. Um, that symbol there means that uh, um, it's recording. Um, in the data log, and there's another uh, another symbol in there that uh, it looks like a little bell, and that's the um, the rate alarm, uh, which I have turned off at the moment. Um, so um, on this display here, we've got um, uh, counts per minute in a large what what it calls large font mode. Um, so it's obviously nice and easy to read. Um, you can change this um, to be. Uh, counts per minute, micro sieverts per hour. Uh, this is interesting, something that I've noticed that uh, in the large font mode it really doesn't respond to button pushes very well. Um, so you just have to keep. Low. 
that's uh, rem, millirem would that be? Uh, probably. Um, and back to counts per minute. Um, so we can change that, um, well if it responds, God, grief. Um, so we've got a text mode where it um, displays the counts per minute it's currently showing max sieverts, elapsed time, zero day, um, zero hours, 12 minutes, 50 seconds. So that's the, the time that it's been turned on. Um, now with the, um, with the power saving modes, um, you can actually extend this out to run for uh, many, many, many days. Um, because it, uh, it'll shut down the, the LCD screen, the backlight, the clicker, the the flashing light, it'll actually appear as though it's completely turned off but it's not, it's actually on and logging which is uh, which is a nice feature to be honest um, so in this uh, in this display mode we can change uh, change a few things, so we've got uh, total count there and it's back into REM um, REM with elapsed time and back um, to uh, microceivers with total count but that total count is since it's been turned on uh, the uh, last display mode is the graphic mode. So this has a, a scrolling um, line chart of the last 60 seconds. Um, now it um, it does auto scale. You can change it manually if you want to, but you can you, you can auto um, it will auto scale normally. So if I put uh, put a few more counts. On this, and you can see, you can see it auto scaling there, which is a nice feature. But you do only get the last 60 seconds. I haven't found any any way to uh, to change it um, so it shows hours or days worth in as a as a chart like that you really I, th I think they just expect you to just download it and put it into excel to do that properly so uh, on the last button here is to access the um, the menus i'm not going to go through a lot of these there's, there's plenty of options in there to change it however you like um, um, quite a, quite a nice selection of different different options and things you can turn on and off although i would have said it would have been nice to have easy access to turn the clicker on and off uh, for example, but it, it's a little bit of a faff to uh, to go into user option, speaker, turn off, and then you have to wait for it to set, and then you come back out. It's it's not a particularly quick and easy way. It would have been nice just to have one of these buttons where you just long push it and it turns the clicker off, um, or uh, something like that. Okay, so I've finally got this set up and running. Um, the uh, between this and and the uh, the software on the computer, it it really is um, quite of a, a finickety bit of software. It, it just never seems to want to connect to it. Um, it uh, just comes up with errors, or it just doesn't do anything at all. But I've got it here working now. After you know about three minutes of just um, clicking around and cursing and swearing at it, so it's basically mirroring now the the what's what's on the unit is uh, is shown on the screen there. So if I bring my uh, Fiesta Wear back, So I'm also going to connect up my uh, Mighty Ohm Geiger counter. This has um, uh, a serial adapter because um, um, it doesn't actually have a serial driver built onto it, so you have to use one of these external ones. So. But thankfully, I know this one works. Okay, so hopefully you can see both of those on the screen. Um, the uh, the one on the uh, right is the the GQ Electronics GMC 300E and the one on the left is the text output from the Mighty Own Geiger counter. So likewise with the other uh, one if I just bring my source up to the
so that's um, probably around about 4,100 or so is an average I would say which is uh, 22.23.4 22.8 microsieverts so about 23-24 microsieverts per hour So that actually seems to be struggling to get above uh, one and a half thousand counts per minute. It's saying um, seven point six microsieverts. Okay, so uh, that's enough of that. Uh, I want to see what's inside it. So, um, as Dave Jones says, um, don't turn it on. Take it apart. Okay, so we have the battery. I'll leave that connected for the moment. So quite clearly along, along the bottom here we have um, the, the Geiger Muller tube. I've not seen one that's glass before, but um, it's, uh, I wouldn't say it's uncommon. Main processor which is an STC Twelve C five A six O S two. Um, got uh, what's likely the main oscillator for that uh, microcontroller. Um, you have another um, oscillator here. That's a three two seven six eight. You know, clock crystal. Um, I would imagine this part over here is the um, voltage multiplier to run the. Uh, to run the Geiger tube, um, you've got a USB port that we saw earlier. The um, I've actually read up on this. It's actually an analog output. Now you can actually plug headphones into it and just hear faint clicks, but uh, I think it's really meant for um, for bypassing all of the the processing on this and just get the um, the output from the tube. So we've got another crystal here. Um, I would imagine that's probably for the. Um, this is a prolific RS232 driver, um, RS232 to USB, so which is how this communicates. So we've got a Winbond 25160 VSG. Got a DS1302, so. The, um, that is probably a real time clock. And we've got is that a package with nothing written on it. Yes, this here is um, has no markings on it at all. So uh, no idea what that is. Um, here you've got um, the flat flex connector coming through um, that will be for the LCD tube is a M4011 um, looks like manufactured 2014 so it's obviously brand new I'm guessing um, around here you've got um, driver circuits for actually uh, getting a, um, a usable signal into the microcontroller so it can actually count the, the impulses from the, uh, from the tube um, also got what looks like to be a uh, um, programming uh, port for the microcontroller possibly. So in all that uh, looks pretty good. Um, again with like a lot of uh, Chinese stuff the hardware tends to be um, pretty good but uh, often let down by the software. I think that might be the case with this. So overall um, quite a nice little unit. Um, quite relatively pleased with it. I think the firmware could need um, could do with some improvements um, as well as the uh, the Windows software that uh, you can download from their website. Um, 
uh, I think uh, it'll certainly be uh, certainly be interesting to use. Uh, I will report back on a, in a later video about the um, what the data logging function is is like because um, it obviously it'll take me a bit of time to get to, to get a handle on that um, and see um, see what's good and bad about it. Um, so uh, thanks for watching and uh, like and subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks very much.